Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome. Praise God to our Sunday service. Our, sorry, uh, welcome to our Wednesday service. Amen. As we get started in the word of the Lord uh, to bring before you the word of God this evening. Amen. On this Wednesday service, uh, let us get ourselves ready in a posture. Amen. Looks like our batteries wants to go dead. So we want to get those taken care of so that we can get started in the service. Amen. And so while we do that, let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, dear Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for how you've watched over us and kept us safe through all hurt, harm, and dangers. And as we prepare to come before you this evening and get started in this Wednesday service, Father, we're praying and asking in the name of your Son, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Father, we ask that you would bless this empowerment. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will bless the word that is to be ministered in this empowerment. And Father, for those, Father, that are to hear this word, we ask, Father, in the name of your Son, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, that you will bless him, Father, to receive this word, and that thereby, Father, your name shall receive the glory, and your children shall be blessed. Come on, family, on this Wednesday night. Let us bless God. Let us give him some praise. Come on, put your hands together. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God for how he has blessed you, watched over you, kept you safe through all hurt, harm, and dangers. Uh, did we make it? Did we make it? If we make, if you made it through anything, this is a chance for you to tell God thank you. If if you made it through today, if you if you made it through Monday, if if you made it through some hard times, if, if you made it through some bad times, but before we get in this word, let us tell God thank you because we made it over. Thank you because you kept us. Thank you, Lord, because you watch over us. Thank you, Lord, because you sitting high and you're looking down low. If you made it, if you made it, if you made it, somebody, you don't need a drum to tell you you made it. You don't need a keyboard to tell you you made it. You don't need your neighbor to tell you you made it. If you made it, you ought to be able to tell God. Thank you. Amen. What, what you made it from, Pastor? I made it from her homes and danger. I made it from hard times to good times. I made it from being without to have something. I made it from being a, having a corrupted mind to having a free mind. I made it. Amen. And while I'm still making it, I'm on my way to glory. Bless God. Amen. It's Wednesday night, y'all. And on Wednesday night, you know what we come to do? Be empowered. Why, why, Pastor? Why, 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 why do we want to be empowered on a Wednesday? So we can get some things, so we can achieve some things, so we can be some things, so, so we can give some things to our children. Bless God. Amen. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly if you want that. If you want more life, if you want the abundant life, this is for you. This is Wednesday night. And we don't just have Bible study. We have Bible study now, but we don't just have Bible study. But we study the Bible for the purpose of being empowered. And I want to tell you something, family. I, I, I know what this is. I used to see this all the time. I've experienced it. I can attest to it. You could be a real good Christian. You could be a very good Christian, studious, moral, upright, and loving. And if if you don't know what empowerment is, oh, you can make your life as hard as it can be being sweet, loving Christian. We have to learn how to be empowered. We have to learn how to grab our power and go out to achieve that, what God has for us. I love what God told Moses. I say it all the time. I say this at least once a week, I think. Uh, he told Moses, he said, what's that in your hand? Moses said, hey, Father, the, the Egyptians are behind us. The Red Sea is in front of us. You know what God said? Well, why are you crying to me? What's that in your hand? I've empowered you. Stretch it out over the waters so that you can set your people, set these people free. Amen. So you know what we have to do, family, on empowerment? We have to use what's in our hands. Use what God has given us. He's taught us to fight. He's, he's, he's purposed us to win, and we have to go out and achieve that family. And we need it. Family, today, oh my goodness, today, we need victory. And you know what we need? Real, substantial, right? Substantial victories. We need to, to grab hold to something that will take us off in the sunset. Something 
We can come home with a smile, right? Getting our uh, means of transportation on our ways to our gainful employment and celebrate God and be a blessing to those that love us and to those that we love. You know, that's what you call substantial victories, you know, marriages, children's uh, uh, achievements. You know, that's what we come to get by the word of God. And you know what else we don't do here at Truth and Home? Uh, by the grace of God, how often do we just talk about money? You know, money, 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 money. Pe people's marriages are falling apart and, and, and one-dimensional money, 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 money. How about me? You know, how about the place where I go to work? How about my children? How about life? God has victories for us everywhere. Don't y'all let me remind you about my top five. Amen. Let me work on my top five because that's what you call substantial victory. Amen. Bless God. Okay. I don't want to hold you long. 30 minutes. 30 minutes of empowerment. We're in a series called The Reason. We're in a series. It's titled The Reason. And what we're looking at is it was around Numbers, the sixth chapter. I'm sorry, the 22nd chapter that Balak call for Balaam, put a curse. Put a curse on the people, you know? Curse is a word that has been exploited in the body of Christ, right? To the extent where we have some say, hey, come get this so I can, I, you can use this, this mechanism and it'll get a curse off of you, right? You know, can't lose, right? And come get this mechanism because you, you have a curse on you. Well, what we wanted to identify through scripture when we talk about the reason and, and combining it with empowerment is, yes, there is an enemy out there. And yes, the enemy wants to curse your life. Now, we don't personify that to a person or an individual who's trying to put a curse. We're talking about the enemy himself who wants to inflict curses on our lives. And what I was explaining to the family through the three foundations of faith, relationship, um, and our abilities to combat the enemy, those are going to determine the level of success in your life. And so while we're talking about empowerment, we're using that section, we're using the third category to talk about combating the enemy's curse, right? And while we combat the enemy's curse, what does that do? Take us into empowerment. However, family, preach pastor, our failure to combat the enemy's curse takes away our empowerment. Give me an example. Oh, I gave you one last week. <laughs> because he did not know how to deal with the enemy instilling doubt, what was the consequence? Kicked out of the garden. So that was the intent of the, that was his curse. So don't look for the voodoo doll. Oh no, y'all looking in the wrong places. Don't, don't look for, don't look for pins and a voodoo doll and a voodoo doctor, voodoo doctor. Look at what the enemy is doing every day. It's not the person, it's the enemy. And what, and what is he doing? So why, why, you got some talking about, come get this mechanism, right, to combat what the person is doing. Pastor Allen is talking about, come get this word so you can tell the enemy to get out of your life. And that's how you get empowerment. That's the cursing I'm talking about, right? And, and guess what? This word is free. You don't have to order. And, and it's not $19.99. <laughs> it's not $29.99. It's not send me a letter. Don't send me a love offering. Sit down. Get the word of God so you can get this curse off of you. Because that's how you empower. Eve, Eve walked into her curse because she allowed the enemy to instill doubt about what God said. Y'all miss, oh man, I want to preach. I want to preach. I want to change your life by the grace of God, by way of the Holy Spirit. He told Eve, you know what the enemy told Eve? The enemy said to Eve, he said, did God really say? Is that did God really create the earth and the world? Are we, uh, did, 
is, is God our, really, our creator? Do you really believe in God? How did, how did Noah get all the animals on the ship? Where did King get his wife from? Did Jesus really rise from? See, when the enemy instills doubt about God's word, that opens the door. And that's what, that's a lot. What Pastor Allen preached in his thesis last week is what we're seeing now. So much of our children getting the, their information from secular media and from outlets that don't believe in God and uh, uh, are firmly against the belief of a creator. If we allow that type of disease to fester in our children, then number one, no matter what mom and dad says, it creates a seed of doubt. And that's what you don't want. Soon, all Satan had to do was ask Eve a question that created a seed of doubt. Did God really say? As she thought about it, it opened the door for her to say, oh, try to the lie. Once the doubt seed was planted, can God get you out? Can God fix your marriage? Can he? Can God elevate your finances? Can he? Can God give you another job? Can he? Can he? If you allow the seeds of doubt to come in, it opens the door to the lie. What did Satan say after she was thinking about it? Oh, oh, you won't surely die. You're going to be like God. That's your lie, Satan. That's what you wanted. But it starts with a seed of doubt. So here's what Pastor Allen is teaching. The curse of the enemy, point one last week, we're going to look at another Another one, grace of God today, was number one, create seeds of doubt. So you want to know how powerful that is? Well, look at the consequences. God shows up. Adam, where are you? I was hiding. Hiding why? I was naked. Who told you? The woman you put here gave us some fruit. That woman, that woman put you put here gave us some fruit. And so God said, well, what is this you have done? What did Eve say? That serpent tricked me deceived me. But now, were there consequences to the deception? Yes. The consequences were they were dismissed out of the Garden of Eden. So, by the grace of God, hear what Pastor Allen is teaching you. It is not a game. And while I got, you know, off into explaining the, the seeds of doubts, God doesn't punish, or you can do what you want, just say forgive, guys God to forgive. When we allow these seeds to come in, we, we want to live thinking, thinking in our flesh that, that we can do these things without consequences. But the enemy knows there are consequences to your doubting God's word. So that's what he does. So seeds of doubt. And if you allow those seeds of doubts to maintain consequences, I didn't get the job. It didn't happen. And nothing is working for me. Mm, seeds of doubt. See, worry is not cute. What, worry, worry ain't cute. Worry, that's not cute. I don't know. What do you think, Pastor? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying. You think that's cute? That's not cute. I get concerned. I'd rather trust God to the end. I, I'd rather go all in with God. He's been too good to me. He, he has a perfect track record with me. I'd rather go all in. Oh, but it looks bad. Yeah, I'm going all in with God. Are you with me? I'm going all in. Praise God. All right, let's move to tonight. Amen. So, seize of doubt and produced consequences. So, Pastor Allen, I, I can tell get rich, get rich, get rich. Get rich, get money, get money, get money. If Satan sows seeds of doubt, right? Consequences. Because we're doubting what God says. And that's that's the truth. Now, so that's where the seed of doubt is focused. God's word. We don't want to doubt it. If God say, pray and ask in the name of his son, Yeshua, Jesus, pray in his name and believe. Amen. Okay, so tonight I want to read Matthew, the fourth chapter. Ooh, I took up half the time in the introduction. Amen. Let's turn this corner. And let's, so Satan is coming to curse you, steal your empowerment, right? Not by personification of a person, but through the work of the enemy. Number one, how? Seeds of doubt. Let's look at number two tonight. Matthew chapter four, verse one. Then Jesus, Matthew four, verse one, NIV. 
Then Jesus, led by the Spirit, this is how the enemy curses, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days, 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. That's number one. Jesus answered, it is written, man should not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. <clears throat> Second time, then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. They will lift you up in their hands so that you not strike your foot against stone. He knows Psalms 91. Note, of all the Psalms you know, enemy, yeah, you know Psalms 91 because that's the one I use on you. Amen. And Jesus answered, it is written, do not put the Lord God to the test. Right? So, second time, third time, verse 8, again, the devil came to him, took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is, writ it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then verse 11, our last verse, then the devil left him and the angels came to attend him. So what was Satan coming to do? Tempt him. Right? The de devil was clear. I'm, I am coming to get you to disobey God. Wait, wait, hold on, Pastor. So, first time I went to Eve to get her to doubt God. Now, he says, I got another trick up my sleeve. By the grace of God, wait till, y God, wait till we get it next week. He said, he said, I got another trick up my sleeve, right? He said, my next trick is, I want you to disobey God. Disobey God? What would have happened if I disobey God? Consequences. You think Satan was wasting his time to get to, to tempt Jesus if there would not have been consequences for Jesus to the negative and to the positive for the enemy? Why do you think he was tempting Jesus? Why? 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 Help me. Help me, somebody. Help, help the pastor preach. Why was Satan attempting to tempt Jesus to get him to fall? Consequences. It's not a game, family. See, we talk about empowerment, but we're leaving out the curses. I am here by the grace of God tonight on Wednesday night to walk us into empowerment, right? To to get the best out of life. Isn't that what we said in our in our come in our in our opening lines? Right? We're here to be empowered. Well, how can we be empowered if we're falling to the temptations of the enemy and think that there won't be any consequences? The mere fact that we see recorded in the gospel, according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 11, the enemy spent three times looking to tempt Jesus for what purpose? Disobey God, right? And what would have been, if he would have been successful, his end goal? A negative consequence towards Jesus. Now, in this narrative, that we have, obviously, Jesus overcame temptation. But I want you to consider what was Satan after. Think about it, family, because if that's his MO, if that is his method of operation, family, don't take it for a game when we are tempted. Now, no, Pastor Allen, the one with the mic, in here, Sister Allen, Evangelist Allen, Tootie. Uh -oh. I want I want to call some more names. Uh -oh. Bishop, Pope, Priest, Priest. <laughs> hey, Apostle, Apostle. Prophet. All of us, all of us, are tempted. Yeah. Let's not play games. We're not, nope, not for play, play. Jesus was tempted. So none of us are too, are so holy that we cannot be tempted. Right? right. So temptations come for one purpose, to tear you down. Let's keep it real. Temptations are not to come to make your life 
indulgent and great. The word itself signifies it is a means of tearing you down. Disobey God. Do what God told you not to do. We are tempted to. And it's a battle. It's a battle. And I'm not preaching if I don't tell you that. If I pretend like I'm above it. The devil is a liar. I'm not. We get tempted. But that temptation, you need pastor to tell you, is coming to take away your empowerment, your blessings, your joy. There is no good intent coming from you being tempted to do what God told you not to do. Oh yeah, I'm going to leave it open because you know what I'm talking about. And you know who I'm talking to. So I'm going to leave it wide open. I'm going to leave that door wide open. I'm going to leave that gun. I'm fully loaded. I'm going to just let it hit. I'm, I'm shooting my six, six shooter. It's going to go out. All right. You know, we're tempted. And the enemy wants you to fall into temptation so that it will have a negative impact on your life. Keep it real. Keep it real. Why is, what, else, what else is his game? I'm giving you his aim. I'm giving you his methods. Ephesians 6 and 10. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand. Why did Paul put it in there if we don't have to fight against him? <laughs> why, why, why is it there to tell us to fight if we don't have to fight? Why, why is it there if it's not a part of the equation to our success? Part of us being successful at that thing you want is fighting against the temptation of the enemy. And don't play that game. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Don't tell yourself otherwise. It's all right. It's okay. God forgives. I'm the righteousness of God. And meanwhile, Satan keeps tempting us into Rome. And we think that's without consequences? Why else would he bother Jesus if it was without consequences? <laughs> Why is Paul telling us to fight if it's without? Matter of fact, I got two points. Let me go. Because I'm down to my last 10 minutes before I get carried away. See, I'm preaching like this because I wish somebody would have stopped hooping for a minute. I like a good hoop. But I wish somebody would have had a stop hooping and for a minute and tell it to me for real. For real, for real. Because ain't nobody tell me that. They told me it was Ezekiel's will uh, in the middle of a will. But they didn't tell me about his temptations. And how? If I don't fight against, I lose. Say that again, Pastor. If I don't fight against these temptations, I lose. I fall. I falter. I get set back. I can come back. I get set back. Yes. Just like paying spades. I got sacked. How do you spell that? <laughs> but that's what happened. That's what happened. I got sacked. I lost. I, I went in. I, got, I didn't get my books because I failed to temptation. Family, I know a part of my success, part, part of my success in my life has to include me telling the devil, go to hell. Go to hell. It's in the book. Hell damn ass in the Bible. <laughs> Go to hell. How, how, where do you get that from? The Bible says, Jesus said to him, away from me. Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God only. Serve him on. When Jesus told Satan away, the devil left him alone. And the angels came. So let me get into my two points. How do you fight temptation? Okay, so don't let me just preach to you without teaching to you. Don't let me just preach and don't teach. So lessons Pastor Allen had to learn that I'm incorporating in life daily, every day, every day. And uh, it is for us to do the same because I know that prayer that I have on the altar. Listen, I don't know your prayer, what you have on the altar, but I know I have, I consistently have a prayer on the altar. And as soon as I get one answer, I still, I've replaced that with another. I have prayers on the altar. I have things I need. I'm looking. I know it's coming to me. It's a prayer that's on the altar, right? And do you have them? Well, having prayers on altar, you have to learn how to fight temptation because your failure to fight against it, right, will have a negative, will have a consequence on your life and could impact the success in your life. And let's tell it right. So I have to learn, I had to learn for me to be successful 
to get what I want, I had to make a choice. Give in the temptation. And that temptation, I was tempted. Talking to grown folk. Tempted, right? But my ability to fight is what's going to, I got to make a choice. What you want, boy? What you want? Which one you want? Which one you want? Door one to door two. Give in the temptation. Trust in God to pray on the altar. So I had to learn it, right, family? That's what I'm teaching. We have to fight against temptation. So, number one, what do we say? Well, what is this? What, what is the prayer you pray every day? What is the prayer you pray every day? What does it say? Right? Our Father's Prayer. What's in that Our Father's Prayer? Lead me not. <laughs> right, family? Every day I am praying. How do you overcome temptation? Number one, stop thinking you can do it. I've been there too. You know, you get so close to God, you think I could. No, 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 no. You, you can't. I, I, I stopped relying on my strength exclusively to get me out. I stop. And I and as Jesus taught us every day, don't go into the battle alone. Take him with you. Take the word. Take Jesus. Take God. Take the angels. What did he say? Lead me not into temptation. And what that means, translated, is God, you know, just like it says, the be cause. Deliver, lead me not temptation, but deliver me from evil. I need your help. I need your blessings. And so that's the prayer. I argued while it is, you know, it, it, it is a form of teaching that we could, you know, look back on and reflect to think about options that Eve could have. But that would have been one option in that moment. Let me talk to God. You telling me to get this fruit. I have a seed of doubt. Let me pray about it and say, God, lead me accordingly. But don't let me fall to the devil's temptation. And I haven't even go back to God to even say, confirm, deny or approve. Family, the first thing you want to do, because listen, there are some things that obviously many of us and, you know, and maybe not a sin. Right, family, but just a detriment to our lives an addiction, a habit, a, a, a crutch, you know, a vice. You know, these are things that can destroy us. You know, gambling, family, gambling. Our abilities that, you know, we, we you know, to continuously waste monies. That, that could be a detriment to house and family and children, you know, drinking. So don't clue in on one particular type, but it is those temptations our inabilities to control that desire can prove to be detrimental to our lives. So what do you do? You give it to God, family. You give it to God. He breaks habits. He breaks chains. And it is not for us to always to pull on our own strength, right, to get out, to figure. Or the, the, the idea is to think we're strong enough. I, I, I so appreciate when Jesus says that's what you need to be praying every day because it is something we need help with. You know, Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Give me strength. You know, help me to do what you're calling me to do. Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. Family. He told Peter, he said, I'm praying for you. Right. When the enemy said he wants to sift you like we. What did you say? I'm praying for you. Family prayer helps us combat the enemy's temptations. Father, get me out of this. I want to know. Uh, 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 what's that song we were saying? Valerie Boyd, Sister Allen, get me out of Jesus. Right? So, so that's what you got to pray. You got to sing it, holler it, hum it, yes. speak in tongue it. Get me out of Jesus. Because yes. that is real for all of us. We can't always stop our vices, our habits, right. our detriments. And it's going to help. Yes. Don't feel bad. Because some that think that they don't have, they have. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Stop, ask God, help me with my temptation. And then James 4 and 7, and I'll close it out with this family, almost done. James 4 and 7. James 4 and 7 tells us, you know, I love these New Testament scholars and, uh, and apostles that are breaking it down for us. None of them shied away from the enemy. Not Peter, 
not Paul, not James, not Jude, not John the Revelator. They all incorporated the enemy's work in their messages. Right, family? That tells us something. These great men of God knew that they had to teach the body of Christ how to combat the enemy in order for us to be all that God has called us to be. So to leave him out of empowerment, to leave these messages out, and to live life as if hell is not real, Satan is not real, it is where we do a disservice to our own success and our legacies. Right, family? A legacies. You know? You know? The Bible says, Psalms 90, you know, bless me. May your deeds be shown to me and your splendor to the children you bless me to have. I want you to bless me, Father, and be a blessing for me so that my children can be blessed through my blessings, right? Leaving a legacy. Daddy did. Mama did. Mama left. My daddy left me this. Amen. That's a legacy. Amen. Bless God, family. James 4 and 7 says, resist the enemy and he'll flee. As, as what happened with Jesus. So Satan, I, and, I, I, and I love this part of teaching that you may have heard me minister before, right? God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent, one, and he's omnipresent. So high, can't go over. So low, can't go under. So wide, can't go around. He's everywhere all at the same time. David said, what can I go? He's not there. Highest heights, lowest depths. God is omnipresent. Satan isn't. And his forces and his army and imps are limited. So you know he, who Satan goes after? Weaker vessels. Low-hanging fruit. But for those that have a made-up mind, those that are on our knees praying, fasting, calling on God for help, calling on our angels to be with us, and telling that devil, go to hell, get away, back up. Uh-uh. I see it. It looks good. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It ain't, I ain't going back. Not going back. God, Satan said, I can't waste my energy on you. You're too strong. So James said, if you resist him in your strength, where you get that strength from? I'm praying and fasting, Pastor. Are you, you, boy, you strong. No, I'm not. I'm, I just prayed up. <laughs> I'm walking in his glory. I got my mind made up. I, I'm focused, Pastor. I'd rather have what I'm praying for on this altar than this thing that's tempting me. That's how you do it. Yes. Fam, I'd rather have my prayer on the altar than this thing that's in front of me. So instead of engaging into temptation, I'm going to hold out. Come on. I'm, going, I'm going for what I got on the altar, and I'm believing God for that prayer on the altar. Satan wants me to go into temptation, so I forfeit my prayer on the altar. But you're a liar. You're a liar. I, I got voice to use. I got, I got in the name of Jesus. Get thee behind me. I got power. I'm resisting you, enemy. For, whereas before, young pastor, young, young, when I say young pastor, Young, 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 young Steve, long, 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 long time ago, <laughs> entertain, engage, but now God has blessed me by way of prayer, fasting, study of the word, growth, maturity, to learn how to resist the enemy, not on my own strength, I've been coached up, I've been trained up, what is your name, what is your name, what is your name, have you been trained up to resist the enemy? That's important. You know the wrongs that are tempting to you, right? Family, you want to give God some glory? Resist the enemy. As James taught us, 4 and 7, as Jesus did, let the enemy leave you. Because, you know, you can't stop my empowerment. So you try to sow seeds of doubt, number one, and you try to get me to disobey God. Doubt, disobey. That's two. God's will. We have one more next week. And as we come back next week, looking at the MO of the enemy, it, it is teaching us how to combat the curse and walk into empowerment. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, grace, and your mercy. Father, you bless us, Father, to come together for your word and the study of your word. Father, as this word has been ministered, we ask, Father, that for those that are to hear this word, Father, we're praying and asking in the name of Jesus that you would bless them, Father, to receive this word, and that thereby, Father, your name shall receive the glory. Your children shall be blessed. Father, we pray and ask these prayers and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.